Hi, everybody. Today is Tuesday, the 30th of November, and I'd like to welcome you to the next episode of Tunes Day with Skip from my uh, little fiefdom here in Roland, Switzerland. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed your Thanksgiving over in the United States or wherever you may have exported the grand holiday off to. Um, last day of November means we're about to get into uh, all of the rush of the holidays in December. Uh, for us, it's going to be Abigail's seventh birthday on the 8th of December, so everyone, especially Abigail, is looking forward to that. Um, today, well, the first couple of weeks I focused on uh, two tunes well known to fiddle players as kind of uh, party pieces on their instruments, the Mathematician and uh, the Independence. Uh, last week I played a nice uh, handy jig called Contentment. Contentment is Wealth, and today I'd like to break out one that's uh, very well known in the Illin piping tradition. Uh, over the years, I've been running around doing this music since the uh, late 70s, and it's been my distinct honor and privilege to play with a lot of uh, phenomenal musicians over the years, and uh, especially a series of world-class pipers, Illin pipers. Scots pipers also, but today we're focusing on a, a uh, Irish, a tune for the Irish pipes. So everybody knows bagpipes, right? In Irish music, if we say pipes, we're generally talking about the Illin pipes, the bellows blown pipes uh, used in traditional Irish music, not the Highland pipes, the mouth blown pipes with the, the drones up in the, over the shoulder that you used to see. So if I say a piping tune, or a tune played by pipers, I'm usually talking about tunes in the, in the Irish music tradition. Uh, first great piper I uh, played with was a friend of mine named Tim Britton, uh, who at the time was living down in Philadelphia. Amazing piper, uh, has a unique style. Nobody plays the pipes like Tim Britton. A uh, wonderful maker of pipes as well. I own a set of a uh, full set of Timmy Britton pipes now for 20 years or so, 25 years. Can't play them very well, but I have them. Uh, Timmy was also a big inspiration for me when eventually I started making my, uh, my own instruments. Uh, after Timmy, I started playing a lot with the, uh, the boss from New York, the great Jerry O'Sullivan. Powerful man on the pipes, gotta tell you. Jerry will blow you right out of your chair. On the pipes. Uh, after that, I played for uh, a few years quite a bit with uh, the great Patty Keenan from the Bothy Band and uh, Joe McKenna from Joe and Antoinette uh, McKenna, lovely piper. Um, and one magical time I uh, played with the great uh, Liam O'Flynn before he uh, tragically passed away not so long ago. Uh, the one thing all of these great musicians have in common, other than uh, endless amount of tunes, is uh, one in particular that's uh, kind of a party piece for Illin Pipers. There's a few of them, but uh, this is one uh, up at the top of the heap, and it's a great old tune called Colonel Fraser. Now, some people pronounce it Colonel Fraser. Uh, it's usually written F-R-A-S-E-R, -E so Fraser. Um, there's a couple of ways to play this tune, uh, and I don't mean by the notes, I mean by the repeat scheme. It's one of these endless five-part tunes. Uh, some people play it with all of the repeats, but when I played uh, with Liam Old, he played it with no repeats, which I found uh, was a nice way of, uh, of playing this tune. It kind of keeps all of the parts fresh as you're, going, as you're going through them. So we'll give it a go, see what happens. Uh, in honor of all my piping friends out there, Colonel Fraser. Thank <laughs> you. 
So there you go, a flute player having a gun at uh, a famous piping party piece, the great reel, Colonel Fraser's. I hope you enjoyed that tune. It's a great old tune, a little bit of a memory, memory test, as all of these long ones are, but flute players, give her a go. Fits very, very nicely on the flute. So again, I hope you all uh, enjoyed your Thanksgiving. Oh, Thanksgiving. I talked about cooking a grilled turkey, and you would not believe how many people privately sent me emails about it. And one question I got a lot of times was, did I cook the stuffing in the bird on the grill? No, I did not. If I did not cook the stuffing in the bird, how do I get nice turkey flavor in the stuffing? Very easy. When the turkey is done cooking, it has to sit for a half hour, 45 minutes before you carve it. In that time, you take some of the pan, the juices from the pan, pour it into your still wet stuffing, mix that all in, bake that in the oven or bake that also out on the grill if you want. And there you go, lovely turkey flavor and your stuffing cooked outside the bird. So once again, thanks for tuning in to Cooking Tips with Skip. I wonder if I can get Food Channel to sponsor me. Good idea. Cheers, everybody.